part is this morning, I've made one spliff out of this. I want a really big spliff because it would be more in one, it would knock me out. But that's it, that's it there. It's not much, but that's ranging around about, probably get around about for five pound, but you're only gonna need about, probably that little tiny bit there to knock you out. He couldn't sleep one night and someone offered him a bit of a joint and that got him to sleep one night. The next night he thought it was a good idea, you know what I mean? And that's how these addictions start. I get a couple of joints out of it, about three, four joints out of it, and that does me, that, 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 that is, that'll do me till about six in the morning. Uh, every morning my stomach hurts, uh, sometimes I can be sick, depends on what stuff I've been smoking. So on some can two drugs, I can be on, I can wake up with burns in my jacket, I passed out, you know what I mean, with a joint. That's, that's, I'll put that in a joint, and I'll probably take the knock on that, that little tiny bit, but that does it. That stops your stomach cramps, it stops everything. It's like it just took over. It seriously took over. People just see it as an easy answer to living life easy on the streets. You right. don't feel nothing, you don't see nothing, you don't feel nothing. That's right, like, you know what, yeah. And that's why people take it? Yeah, so it blocks everything on these streets out, everything. If it blew it in your face, it probably knock you out. Like get you stoned. Leaf over there. You're awake, you're alert, you're aware, but you're not in control. So it takes over and you're just stuck. You're stuck, you can't move. Makes everything go away. You don't, you don't, you don't, you're just flogging. You're like, whoa, you know what I mean? It's like, whoa, just shut your eyes. I'm just calm, I feel relaxed. You just feel comfortable, bro. <coughs> I, I like it. I guess you get you proper stoned. Um, I think it is. It's horrible the way it's made, but every drug's horrible. I think people are just very judgmental. No one goes. I want. I want a bad belly ache in the morning. I want throw up in the morning. No human wants that. No want to be in pain. But when the smoke it comfort, time flies. Absolutely flies. <laughs> It is very hectic and I've just been speaking to the guys and the reason why it's so hectic is because we don't close the door on anyone. You know, if somebody comes, we're a crisis led service, somebody comes to the front door and they need help because you can't, we have a drop in Tuesday and Friday, two till four, but you can't say to somebody have a crisis at two o'clock on Tuesday and we'll help you. How has it, has it the sort of situation in Manchester got any work, like got worse since it's been criminalised? Yeah, a lot, a lot worse because now you're not getting sealed packets, so you don't know what's in them. Some spice that you buy on Deansgate is different to what you might buy in Piccadilly Gardens. It's now kind of every man for himself. It can be tampered with a lot more because it's now being sold in the snap bags. Um, and it's turned a, a sort of a community of people against each other now. Because one may not smoke spice anymore, but they'll sell it and they're getting people to go out and beg for it. And they're actually making people, I'll give you some spice, but you need to go out and beg for it and then give me the money that you get from begging. So it's, it's 100 million times worse than it was before the ban. So why, why do they need to get themselves into such a state that they're on a different planet and not being able to deal with their day-to-day -day life? If we can get to that root cause of that problem and the reason why they feel that, that way, then we can tackle it. Criminalising it just makes absolutely no difference whatsoever. I'm, I paid double for, for a packet of it, if we can get it in a packet rather than, like I showed you last night, in a bag off the street, I'd rather to get it in a packet. When it says it on a packet, it says what's in it, exactly what's in it on the back of it. Do you know why I first smoked, do you know when I first smoked Spice? In Strange Ways there. That's when I first smoked Spice, in South 21. 
on the fours. Um, me and Sitch it was. We've got a joint on the yard, we've bought a joint on the yard for a fiver. This is very new road. This is where the illegal ice shop was in the first place. I guarantee we were walking, if we walked on that side and you didn't have them cameras out, we would get offered twice. I was buying packets from Rydal and it was like, you can get, you could get a gram, you could get a gram for, for a fiver, you could get half ounce for 15 pound. It was a lot cheaper and it had on the packets what, what was in it. Uh, like you could get black chronic, green chronic, uh, clockwork orange, when you was getting it in the packets from the shop behind us, like if you're getting it in the packets from there, you knew what was in it. It said everything that was in it, and it also said not for human consumption. And believe me, I don't know what's in it. Nobody knows what's in Spice right now. I, the other day I smoked a giant, and when I come round, they've got two paramedics with me, and they said, I didn't even know. And they're saying to me, "Come on, Sean, get in the ambulance." I'm saying, "What are you on about? I don't don't need an ambulance." And they're saying, "You do. You're out cold on the floor and near the road." don't know anything about it so and that's because they don't know what's in spice but the spice what's about now because it's a because you don't you, don't, you just don't know what's in it don't care how much spice i've got a smoke i smoke as much as it takes that way i don't feel it i don't don't i don't feel like my baby died last year i don't feel like my mum's dying i don't remember none of it i don't want to remember none of it that's why i do it that's why i won't go on that's why i'm carrying it on and, and i will carry it on until my mum's until my mum's gone because I can't sit there watching it and what like my brothers and my sisters. I can't sit there and watch it die. I can't do that. I sort of put myself on the street. I'll stay on the street and be out here rather than watching my mum die. People smoke it because it's cheap and easy. When they smoke spice, it makes you forget about your problems like if you smoke that, you're not going to think, where am I staying tonight? Where am I going to have a wash? Where am I going to get food from? You don't think nothing. You wake up, you have a drag, spice out your head. All you're thinking now is, where am I going to get my next bag? Where am I going to get my next bag? Kids are just getting origami or like chopped up marshmallow plants, soaking it in acetone, nail varnish remover, liquid cleaner for your alloys, soaking it. And because it's got chemicals soaked into it, it's smoking, it's dangerous. So it's more and more stronger now than it ever was before. So it's more of a situation, more dangerous now than it was back then. Do you know what I mean? The way that spice is, is generally manufactured is that the, the chemical um, is purchased, usually through the dark web, um, and it's imported illegally. And then what will happen is, is it's, it's um, a powder which is then dissolved up in an appropriate solvent. Something like, could be something like, like nail varnish remover or something like that. It's then mixed with an inert plant material and then a dried and then separated into the, 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 the small bags that we see on the street. I was smoking upwards of 58 gram a day to try and kill myself to get rid of the pain of losing my sister, and my nan and so many friends. I ended up, um, it, it was no other way to describe it other than drug induced psychosis. I was seeing things that weren't really there. A police officer's approached me one morning and I've lashed out because I didn't see a police officer, I've just seen a shape coming at me. And I've ended up in prison for six months for ABH. It was after my release, I started smoking spice again. It was about three weeks after my release, I uh, smoked a large spliff of spice. I ended up uh, vomiting uh, uncontrollably. I ended up rupturing my stomach to the point where I was vomiting blood. I threw up a pint and a half of my own blood and ended up in a 14 day coma in St. Thomas's Hospital absolutely destroyed me. I ruined my life with it. I ended up homeless, I ended up walking away from my friends, my job, my home, everything, all because of Spice. It's like I'd never go near it again and I'd warn any one of my friends to stay away from it because it kills people and it ruins your life. You'd typically say, you know, I know it sounds daft, but when you smoke it on the streets, it makes you feel warm. You feel like you've got a warm blanket around you. That is exactly how a heroin user would talk about using heroin feeling warm, feeling enclosed. Um, or the gang say, it's the only thing that gets me to sleep. I've been trying to get to sleep in a car park, you know, you're worried about being attacked, feeling really vulnerable. If a smoker joint a spice, you know, it gets me to sleep. So it seems to have this ability to condense time, whether it's to make, you know, three, four, five hours pass, or make a long period of time feel shorter. So again, you speak to homeless people and they'll say, you know, I've been on the streets for two years, it feels like two months. How bad is spice when it comes to addictiveness? 
horrific. It's, you know, we've had people that we know of, sort of anecdotally, that they've swapped from heroin onto spice because it's cheaper, and then they found it's harder to get off spice than it is to get off heroin. How long would it be until I could probably just pick up spice if I wanted to? Ten minutes. And seven minutes of that is walking up the street. So it's, it's very, it's easy, you know, and if you see people in a certain way, you'd approach them and ask them where they get it from, or if you're around the city centre long enough, somebody will probably ask you if you want to buy some. I could take you right now to the centre of Piccadilly Gardens and just stand there on one spot like this and you'll watch people coming to me saying, do you want to buy a spice? That's the worst thing. That's how horrible it is in Manchester now. Spice is too easy to get hold of, man. You can stand in one spot like this, someone will say, do you want something? Do you want weed? Do you want spice? Do you want crack? Do you want heroin? Do you want... It's, it's flooded. The town's horrible. Do you know what I mean? Not every homeless person in the city centre are all spices. Manchester's fucked through spice, spice has fucked it. And when the police made it illegal, that's when they made it worse. If they'd have kept it legal and drawn everybody off it properly, they wouldn't be half the crime there is now, they wouldn't be half the people on it now. Because obviously, these, the police have just snapped it off, shut the shops down, people are still addicted to it. It's that bad, like, they're killing each other for it, you know. Someone's gone in someone's pocket, and because he's gone in someone's pocket, they've then said, you're coming pick an ounce up with me. So when he was going for spice, there weren't no fucking spice. It was a stitch up. He was just taking him on the canal to kill him. They battered him. They've gone too far, they've killed him. Now, now he's been killed all through spice. That's, this, that's the second one out of my mates that I know has been killed over spice. One of them got burnt in his tent. He was, he could, his he had spice and the rest of him didn't. So they battered him for his spice. That kid was only 19. 19 and got killed in a tent through spice just because he, he had a few spliffs and they didn't have a spliff. But the kids, they wanted a spliff and he had a spliff. They killed that poor kid for that spice. So post ban, um, we've been seeing spice in this sort of form here. So it's a, a very nondescript uh, green uh, plant material. Now, if you actually bought the cannabinoid on the market and then manufactured that, you'd probably be spending a couple of pounds to actually import the cannabinoid, say a gram of that. That would produce 500 bags of uh, half a gram in weight. And you'd probably get a markup of about 2,500 pounds. So they've sort of got a catch-22 there. They've, all, the, all the drug dealers now, like people who used to deal cocaine, heroin, crack, all the big-time drug dealers now have sort of moved away from that. They still do that on the sideline, but now they've got spice as a main avenue because it's such a moneymaker. It's quite basic and quite easy to do. You can go online now and you can search, you know, how to make spice, how to make synthetic cannabinoids, and it's a step-by-step a -step set of instructions about how you would actually do that. So if you think how many homeless people are in Manchester city centre, say there's a rough number, say 5,000. There's a rough number. 5,000 people get 10 or 20 pound a day. 5,000 times 10 or 20. That's nearly 50, that's 50 grand. That's a lot of money. That's a lot of income to be getting just from people who are begging it of others on the streets. Never mind people who have got jobs, who pay a wage, who get a wage and pay for it out of that. It's, so, it's such stupidly easy money that people, are sh they, they, they just think they're stupid to turn away from it. People that are on it, it's hard for them to get off though, do you know what I mean? It's hard to actually realise I want to stop and I need help. You can't tell them to stop smoking it. They've got to want the change themselves. 
You know, there's death involved, but you still take that chance, 50-50 chance. Every drag's a 50-50 chance if you're gonna live or die. Basically is. Because one drag could kill somebody. Do you know what I mean? It, it is it's like a it is kind of like a heroin rattle in a way because you start your stomach starts getting cramps up, you start sweating when you freeze and you know you're cold, so you're wrapped up in a big coat, but you start sweating and sweating and sweating. You start shaking, physically shaking like that, you'd be sick. I had blood coming out of me, yeah, there and everywhere. Do you know what I mean? How easy is it to like get addicted to? Is it like a very addictive substance? It's like that. I know people that have been on the streets for 30, 40 years. They've been heavy heroin and crack users for those, for those 30 or 40 years, and even they won't go anywhere near spice. I mean, I've, I've physically seen it with my own eyes, like people that have woken up thinking they're going to have the sweats and the runs from a heroin withdrawal, and really the shaking from a spice withdrawal, and they haven't even noticed that they haven't done gear for like four weeks and they've just been smoking spice. That, the, the spice here, yeah, when it used to be in a packet, it never knocked you out like that. It knocked you out, yeah, but not like that. Like, like now you can take two, three pulls of it, out. I thought I'd go from heroin to spice, but I haven't, I've been still having an heroin habit, a spice habit, and a crack habit. So instead of getting rid of a, spy, a smack habit and getting a, a spice habit, I've ended up coming down in all three. So every morning I do go for three bits a, a bag of spice, a bag of smack, and a piece of crack. And I, that's breakfast. That's my breakfast. I, don't, I won't eat nothing until I've done that. When I've done that, that's me good to go. I'm, I'm good for everything then when I've had that. So until I've had that, I'm just the nastiest bastard under the sun. Spice to me, it's a whole new class. Like you get your class B, C, A. I think spice is another class above A. Anything man made with chemicals now, they call it a new form of spice. Like crystallised MDMA, they're saying it's crystallised spice. It's a new man-made chemical drug. It can kill you instantly. Instantly, man. One little dab of that can, can end you. The concentrations have, uh, potencies have been around 2 to 7% prior to the ban. Post-ban, we saw a massive spike specifically in Manchester, and that was associated with a significant rise in potency by about 10 times the, uh, the normal dose. So we were looking at between about 17 to 20%. And that was, uh, that was directly linked to about 53 emergency call-outs um, that were received that one weekend. Originally, was we say, compared to cannabis, you could buy a, a gram for £10 and you could get 30 to 40 joints from one gram. So people talk about just needing a tiny pinhead, or like the equivalent of a grain of rice, and put that in a joint. Then people would talk about, in a matter of months, the tolerance builds up to such a degree that they're then smoking five, six, seven, eight grams a day. And it's quite common when we've been doing the research to see somebody put a half gram pack into one joint. So they go from getting 30 to 40 joints out of one gram to just getting one or two joints out of a pack. Not even a gram. About a point five, about two hours. I get a couple of joints out of it, about three, four joints out of it. And that does me, that, 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 that's, that is, that'll do me till about six in the morning. Would you say this drug problem, have you ever seen anything like this? Never, never. I mean, I'm, Old school, I remember the Hacienda days of pills and um, MDMA and all those kind of things. It's, it, I'd call it an epidemic, I've never seen anything like it. Just because you're in a shit place and you've got nowhere else to go, nothing else to do, does not mean you have to sit there and smoke spice and obliterate yourself. I reckon if you'd put any one of the politicians that sit in the Houses of Parliament now, put them on the streets, go, yeah, here's a spliff of spice. I'm going to come back to you in a month's time and see how bad you are. Guaranteed they'll be sat there with no fucking shoes on in a foil blanket begging for spice. That's what it does to everyone. It just strips you of your humanity and everything you are as a person. If anything, it's just a thousand times more dangerous because when it was still legal, it was being made by companies that are regulated. There was a certain amount of regulation in the actual product itself. Certain chemicals weren't added. They were measured properly. But now people are buying the formulas offline, making it at home. So people are making their own mixtures up and editing the recipes in different ways and that's why people are dying so quickly now. So you don't know where the products come from, you don't know how powerful it is, 
don't know what's been added to it, what's been taken away from it. Basically, it's, it's a game of roulette. If you go and buy spice from a dealer in the city now, you're playing a game of roulette because one drag could kill you. One drag will drop you dead because it could have been laced. They could kill you for a fiver. Just for a five pound bag of spice, they could take your life. And they're not bothered because they've made the money off it. Now, it's your family that deals with everything after your spice use. Do you know what I mean? You used to stop, doesn't it? Spice is just killing people. If the government carried on selling it in the shop, you wouldn't have half of the problems you'd have now. I promise you. It's a billions of pound industry when it was legal. So what's it going to be like now it's illegal? Do you know what I mean? It's a bad game, man. Bad. You know, whether it's legal, class A, B or C, it's not really going to have any impact on people's kind of decision making, whether to, whether to use it or not. And I think the focus is always to be, you know, targeting the dealers. And in terms of the users, it's about trying to engage them in treatment. What we need to look at is reducing the onset. And most people that you speak to, they'll say they're first introduced to Spice in the prison system. So we need to do more work in the prison system to stop people using it because the prison system is basically churning out spice users into the community. So if you criminalise users, you put them into prison, then you know that's just self-perpetuating this kind of cycle. Oh, in the fucking hell, same place it's all smack and crack in it, phone call and it's fucking there. We need five, ten minutes. If you don't even do that, you walk to the gardens or you walk to fucking these gate. And you get it, you get it straight away. You walk to Chinatown, you get it, you got it. Manchester City Centre is full of spies. Like a little bit of stone now. Feel that right? Just like I'm in a cold, like a this one smoking, you know. This is probably it. I don't even know what this is. It's hard, it's very hard. I mean, how long is it dirty and all that? What about those fucking bricks, like? I've bought this in the fucking town. You don't choose that, it's weird, I've got backgrounds.